So once upon a time, when I think I was about six years old, I was full of questions, like most kids. And I asked my mom a question. I said, mom, how big is the universe? Now, I think I was just learning about stars back then, and I, I was kind of discovering all of these concepts. And because I was full of questions, my mom probably didn't want to answer all of this. So she said, son, it's infinite. And because it was such a brilliant answer, it actually created more questions, of course, but I didn't really ask them. Instead, what my mom didn't really realize is that I started dreaming and I started exploring and I started asking all these questions that essentially led me to where I am today. But that night, when I was six, I still remember how I was actually lying in bed and trying to imagine. I was trying to imagine how can it be infinite? What if I, what if I flew through the universe really, really, really fast? And let's do this right now, because we can, because this is space engine. If I flew through universe really fast, would I reach the edge? Would I see something different there? Would things be different? Now, those questions were never answered. They're still not known to us. I'm still dreaming, I'm still trying to imagine, but it's difficult. And today we're actually going to try to imagine what you would really see at the edge of the universe. <laughs> Now, to start our adventure, we're going to do a little bit of um, imagining and also a little bit of simulationing. That's not really a word, but never mind. So first, um, why is it that you would actually see exactly the same? Well, let me, let me give you an example. So let's say you're going hiking and you stand on top of a hill and you look around yourself and you basically see, you know, something like this. There's a horizon in the distance, there's a bunch of houses, there's a bunch of other hills and all around you, you kind of see this, but you also see this edge that is kind of there. This is what we call the horizon. And this is actually one of the reasons why for many, 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 many years, people believed that there was actually the edge of the world. There was the end of the world. And you could basically fall off the edge of the world. And you could also discover some incredible creatures, maybe somewhere near it. Well, now today, for the most part, almost all of us know that this is not true. As a matter of fact, if you were to go to the edge of this world in this picture and to then look around yourself, you would now see a different picture with new buildings, new hills, but you would also see the old hill where you used to be standing, except now it's at the edge of this world. So as you can see, no matter where you go on the planet, you always have this edge of your vision, but at the same time, you always kind of have new stuff to look at. And something similar to this happens here in the universe as well except that edge, the visible edge, is much, much larger. So when you are looking at our universe from the beautiful planet Earth right here, what you're looking at is essentially very similar to what you saw on the hill. You're looking at the stars and planets, and then far, far away at a distance of about 47 billion light years, in every single direction, you're going to see the edge, the visible edge. This visible edge is actually formed by the limit of the speed of light and not really by the actual shape of the universe. And in every direction, in no matter where you are looking from and basically no matter where you are in the universe, you're going to see new stars, new planets and well, essentially what you're seeing here, but maybe from a slightly different perspective. Now, luckily for us in Space Engine right here, we do have this visible edge of the universe. So you can actually even go there and imagine um, what it might be like, except that of course, it only represents the observable universe that we have right now. So here, if I actually accelerate to dramatic, dramatic speeds and escape our galaxy and then move far, far, far away, I'm going to reach um, the edge of observable universe. But of course, this is actually not the reality that I would see if I was there. Now, let's just go there first. It's actually going to take us a while to get there because like I said, it's pretty far away from us. Nevertheless though, you can definitely reach it in the simulation. Now at this speed, which is about 280 million light years per second, it's going to basically take me um, around a minute or so to get to where I'm going. And once I get there, what I'm going to see is well, essentially empty space. Now this is because we don't really know what's after this. We have no idea what's here. Theoretically, we believe that it's just more galaxies, more planets, and more stars. But we have no means of actually seeing it. The speed of light doesn't allow us, because since the creation of the universe, since the Big Bang, 
some things moved away so far away and so quick that they actually escaped our visible um, universe, our observable universe. And because our universe also expands and accelerates, it practically becomes impossible for us to ever see those objects. Now that's actually a topic for another video because there's a lot of uh, explaining to do on why is it that the universe is also expanding and accelerating, why the universe is exactly 40 or approximately 47 billion light years in radius, and um, what may be happening outside of it. But I actually found um, a picture from a really old book that kind of shows you visually what may be happening here. So we have the observer on Earth right in the middle, and then we have the observable universe of about, uh, well, it says 45 billion, but it's really close to 47 billion light years. And um, everything outside of this is unknown to us, but we assume that it's more stuff. Now, we don't really know how much of stuff and we don't really know what kind of stuff, but we do know that, or we do think we know that it's about the same stuff as we see in our own observable universe. So for all we know, there might be another person right here standing and looking at their observable universe that's actually outside of our universe, and they could be wondering the same thing. But because the universe is constantly expanding and accelerating its expansion, we'll actually never see each other. Now, a very common way of trying to imagine um, what's really happening with the universe and how it's actually expanding is to, well, essentially imagine um, a balloon. And maybe on this balloon you can actually draw a few stars that would represent um, the galaxies or stars or planets that have formed in this particular early universe. And then as the universe expands, the distance between stars starts increasing. And as the universe starts expanding, the distance between these stars also starts expanding as well. Now, this is actually something that was proven several times, and this is something we refer to as the Hubble law, the law of expanding universe. And this is also something that we were able to calculate pretty precisely um, in the last few years, specifically using the Hubble telescope. But the problem with this particular analogy is that, well, first of all, this makes people assume that the center of the ball is the actual center of the universe. At the same time, it also kind of does create the idea of the edge of the ball and the actual ball or the balloon expanding into something, into another dimension. But the reality is that um, the math behind this particular idea does not require any of those concepts. You don't need to have the center. The center is literally everywhere. You don't really need to have another dimension to expand into, even though technically you could have uh, for something to universe to expand into, it doesn't have to be so. And lastly, the edge itself that you see on the ball is not necessary either. Like I mentioned before, if you were to stand on the hill, the edge is in one location if you're standing here, but in a completely different location if you're on another hill. So there is no actual edge. The observable edge is there, but it's not an actual physical location. And this is why mathematics, in a sense, is the beautiful solution to the universe. It allows us to perfectly manipulate these concepts that our brains just can't grasp. So mathematically, the universe is expanding in every direction from every point in space, and it does not need to have another dimension to expand into. It's sort of expanding into itself, and it also does not need to have any edge anywhere. But I guess we sort of deviated from the course here. The question I was asking is, so what would you see from the edge of the universe? So basically, if I were to go far, far away at a distance of 47 billion light years from Earth, what would I actually see there? So right now I picked a random uh, procedurally generated galaxy that's practically at the distance of about 45 billion light years away from us. And uh, we're going to be looking around and essentially seeing, well, the same stuff. Well, actually, no, different stuff, but similar visual things. We see the stars, we see the galaxies. But then what if we were to actually look back to where Earth was? What would we see then? Now that's a different question, because the answer to that is nothing. We would see absolutely nothing. If I were to look back to where our planet Earth was located from where we actually came, if we were there right now, literally if this was like a teleportation situation where you instantly transport yourself to this location, you would be looking at a location that's uh, about 13.8 billion years old. Uh, Earth did not exist back then. This is actually about 8 billion years before Earth was created. 
As a matter of fact, the Milky Way most likely also didn't exist, or if it did, it was really tiny and it looked completely different. So, in a sense, we would actually see something completely, completely different from what we are used to seeing. But most importantly is that none of the molecules that created Earth and none of the stuff that's in your body was actually even created yet. It took quite a lot of supernova to actually get there. Because remember, we're looking at the edge of the universe, so you're actually looking in the past, and so you're looking at stuff that happened practically right after the Big Bang. Okay, so this was under the assumption that this was instant teleportation. How about if we actually got here, like, I guess, um, in 47 billion years from now? Or essentially, we would get there when the light that leaves Earth right now gets there. So what would we see then? Once again, nothing. And the reason for this is, once again, the actual expansion of the universe and also the acceleration of the expansion of the universe that's caused by the uh, very mysterious dark energy. Because of this, um, practically as soon as you start looking in this direction, you realize that the Milky Way and the Earth and the Sun and everything that we know and love so dearly has actually disappeared behind the horizon of the observable universe and will no longer be seen again. Now, this is actually a very interesting concept, but it stems from the idea that our universe doesn't just expand, it's actually accelerating its expansion. In other words, the actual balloon is growing faster and faster and faster um, as it sort of inflates. So, essentially, as the universe itself expands, it ends up hiding things that are currently at the edge of the observable universe. And if Earth was located there right now, by the time that the light from Earth gets to the location where we were just standing, you're going to see nothing. It's, the light will actually never reach the location. It will be always uh, sort of beyond the edge of the observable universe. And this is also very kind of hard to imagine and, um, I guess, understand. But this is something we once again found mathematically. Essentially, um, pretty much everything at the edge of the universe is slowly disappearing from the view. And this also means that in about a trillion years from now, we're going to see no other galaxy. Um, and this is something I've covered in the video previously. I've actually talked about things that will no longer be even visible in trillion years. But the idea of a galaxy, another galaxy, to aliens living trillion years from now will be completely incomprehensible. They will not know what they are and that they even were a thing. And so in this sense, the so-called edge of the universe that you see right here is a very fascinating concept. It is a kind of an imaginary concept. It's only based on the fact that we have this visible edge that is uh, created by the speed of light. But it's also a concept that helps us understand the limits of our knowledge of the entire universe. We have no idea if the universe is infinite. We have no idea if it's something that sort of loops um, and comes back to the same location. And we don't really know um, what's beyond the edge. And we will probably never know. Because as of today, as of the current technology, there is absolutely no way for us to ever see beyond the edge of the universe. The only way we could actually potentially see beyond the edge of the universe is if we were to somehow literally teleport to the location of the edge. In other words, if we were to shrink the space-time and to kind of use a warp-like technology, to find ourselves at the edge of the universe, in which case we would see past it. We would actually see what's beyond the observable universe. However, there's actually a lot of um, really interesting papers that try to understand what happens beyond the edge based on the activity of galaxies very, very close to the edge. And going back to the picture I just showed you, there is actually a very interesting dense patch of space-time that seems to be attracting galaxies from the edge here. It's essentially almost as if something was sucking those galaxies into this unknown thing or object or whatever beyond the visible edge. And so that way we can actually maybe try to understand what's happening here. But once again, without actually seeing what's doing this, we'll probably never know. And to answer the question that was asked in the beginning of the video, what would you actually see from the edge of the universe if you looked into the night skies? Well, this. You would see this. You would see stars. You would see something resembling the Milky Way. And you would also see your own new sun. 
However, all of this would be unfamiliar because we're in a completely different location, in a different system, somewhere far, far, far away. Now, interestingly, Space Engine allows us to basically imagine all of this and to go there and to actually look at it. And if you didn't know, Space Engine was actually absolutely free. So do check out the program and download it and try it for yourself and maybe even support the developer because he's been putting a lot of years into this and is doing this basically for no pay whatsoever. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and hopefully now you know a little bit more about the edge of the universe, the expansion and the inflation of the universe and most importantly what the observable universe is like and what you would actually see at the end of it. Now um, in some of the future videos we'll explore the idea of the size of the universe and also the mass itself and we'll talk a little bit more about how we know all of this stuff and what we don't know yet. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who wants to learn more about space and maybe even come back tomorrow to learn something else. Also, consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.